What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great week. Just wanted to remind you, we just dropped our 1K giveaway package on Instagram yesterday. Go over to All Wrapped Up Podcast and check out the details on how to enter to win over $1,000 worth of merchandise. We're giving away tools. We're giving away apparel and a roll of KPMF uh, rap film. Head over to All Wrapped Up Podcast on Instagram and check out how to enter. This podcast episode is sponsored by Rap Life Apparel, a rap-inspired clothing brand. I just got my first batch of shirts the other day from Dusty over at Rap Life, and I got to say I'm super impressed by the quality of the shirts. Super lightweight, great designs, and the shipping was just unbelievable. Head over to raplife.myshopify.com and use coupon code Wrapped Up to save yourself 5% at checkout. And remember, free shipping on orders over $25. Our guest today has worked in sales and marketing for a famous celebrity clothing line. He has now taken what he's learned and applied it to his premium brand. He's now built a large following on social media and YouTube, documenting his vehicle wraps and lifestyle. Please welcome Daniel Sanchez. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to All Wrapped Up Podcast. We'll be interviewing industry-leading rap companies to share tips, tricks, stories, and more. All right, cool. So we'll go live now. Uh, We have Daniel Sanchez from Premium Auto Styling. How are you doing, Dan? Good, man. Thanks Good. for having me on. I'm, I'm excited about this. Man, I've been watching your videos for a very long time, uh, probably since the get-go. Big fan of your That's work, so awesome. man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I love what you're doing for the industry. I love watching you grow. I, I love that you're taking YouTube and documenting everything that you're doing because I can tell from the older videos till up till recently just how much you've changed and how much the shop's changed and uh, right. the quality of work that you're putting out, man. It's just incredible. Thank you. And you know, that, that's really what it's all about. I mean, for me, with the YouTube thing, just to quickly touch on that, it's kind of more for me, but I really want to be able to watch the growth because I wish I can go back and show myself five years ago what I was doing, you know, and where I was at. And yeah. not that we've had exponential growth and we're a huge company, nothing like that. But it's been, you know, huge for me. My, my whole life has changed from this, you know, from this business and the things that we've done coming from my garage into a little shop, into a medium shop, into a bigger shop. I wish I can go back and see it all, but I only started filming a year ago, so I have a year back, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the the power of social media and the way things are going now, transitioning from, you know, Facebook to now you can go live on Facebook, live on Instagram, and the YouTube game is just incredible, man. It's just so cool to watch someone's life, you know, watch them kind of go through from the beginning till now current it's just it's right. so it's such a cool documentary of your life and you can look back at it and just be like wow look at the growth you know right right absolutely we're living definitely in a unique time and you know you said it said it best but social media is kind of it's just insane the capabilities of it and um my business has seen <clears throat> huge impact from social media so that's yeah, why yeah. We're, we're so heavy on it Oh my God. Yeah. I definitely want to get into that. But typically when, how I start the, uh, the podcast is I try to, uh, get an inside look on what you did this weekend. Can you share with us what, uh, what's in your shop, what you guys are working on? Yeah, absolutely. So I I think going back and recapping the week, the biggest project that we got out the door was the Rolls Royce project. I finished that up last night. Uh, that is, or was, I believe it was a 2016 Rolls Royce ghost. Yeah, the matte charcoal gray. That, that exactly. That, that thing looked great. Thank you, man. And you know, it was, that was the first Rolls Royce that I've worked on, or that we've worked on. And um, we were a little intimidated at first, uh, getting into the car. You know, when I say intimidated, I'm more talking on the uh, the tear down. You know, breaking into this car and not breaking into it, but uh, <laughs> taking it all apart, getting it getting it uh, ready for wrap. And uh, it was it was it was tough at the beginning, but we quickly realized that it's basically a BMW, you know, that car is built by BMW. So we've worked on a ton of Beamers. So knowing that we kind of applied all those techniques and we were able to t- take this car apart pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. So, how, how much of it did you have to take down? Obviously, you know, taillights, lights, mirrors. We, uh, we went deep. We went deep. We took 
all the trimming off. We took, you know, all the way down to getting the bumpers off. I've seen a lot of people wrapping the Rolls Royce and uh, not attempt, not taking off the bumpers, you know, mm. I, and I would say that it's probably partly out of being intimidated by that car. Um, t- even shops that typically re- do full removals weren't right. taking off the bumpers because uh, I was poking around. I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, man, do we want to do this? But we did. You know, the car was white and uh, it went to a darker color. So we took it all the way down to the bone. Every wow. trim, every piece came off. Did you end up doing uh, jams? We didn't do the jams on this this time around. The yeah. client actually wants to do them, but the owner of the vehicle, uh, he owns a, a recording studio and it's going to be in a music video. Um, so he needed the car back pretty quickly and it just didn't fit time-wise to, to do the door jams like we wanted. So I think he's going to come back and we're going to attempt to do it the reverse. You know, typically we do the door jams first and then wrap everything. But um, we're going to attempt to do it the other way around if he brings it back. That's awesome. That's awesome. How long from start to finish did that uh, that car take you? It took us a week and a half. Wow. Uh, you know, that was pacing ourselves between some of the other projects. But for the most part, one of my guys was on it full time. That's great. What else did you uh, What else did you have this week? This week, a lot of roof wraps. We do a ton of roof wraps and tail light vinyls, smoking tail lights out. Um, so I had a lot of that in and out. In the shop right now, there's a Toyota 4Runner. I think that's a 2014. Mm-hmm. We're doing a camo wrap on that. I have a 350Z, I have a BRZ, and a Hellcat. So nice. that's what's on the floor right now. So super diverse lineup, but all of them are cool projects. You know, from color change over to the camo wrap, it's going to be pretty cool to do that. How much, um, how much digital printing do you usually do? As far so we as don't like... do much. We don't do much. You know, I actually started off early on, you know, messing around with digital print and uh, I got out of it and I really regret it because now it's coming full circle again. You know, obviously yeah. color change got really popular and listening to your, your podcast, which I went back and listened to them all. It seems like the industry is changing in the same direction I want to go. I want to bring back the print and start doing all the cool, unique printing and over laminates, all the stuff that's available now. So yeah, Had I stuck to it a couple of years ago. I might've been ahead of the curve, but I really got focused on color change for the last couple of years. Yeah, definitely. The, the technology wise, you know, with the oval laminates, with the, you know, the more, um, metallics in the oval lamps. And I see people now and my last, um, episode that I had, we actually recorded, hasn't come out yet with, uh, Kevin from PG Nola. Um, he's actually printing on laminates, you know what I mean? And getting that effect. Right effect on I've, it i've seen his stuff on instagram and like i i just i love everything he's doing so i'm excited to listen to that one yeah yeah he's definitely killing it this year for him is going to be real great um what's what's for the future of your company are you looking to get more into commercial stuff now or purchase a printer and do things in-house um you know so commercial stuff is probably i would still stay away from it even though it's probably the wrong thing to say uh you know we we all know in the industry, there's a lot of money in the commercial work. Yeah. Um, but my big thing is I really got to enjoy what I'm doing. And I enjoy the, like the automotive styling side of it. Um, you know, we're car enthusiasts, all of us here at the shop. So it's hard to break that cycle. You know, we, we want to continue doing what we love and just not mix it up too far to where we're not enjoying it. So yeah. there's a ton of work that I turn away and a lot of it's commercial, uh, even though we have the capabilities of making it happen. Um, I've stayed away from it. So even moving forward, getting a digital printer, uh, I would still probably keep the digital or the commercial work out. Um, we have a ton of different other sources of revenue that we bring in for the shop. So we kind of have that flexibility to, to do that, right. which I know a lot of the wrap shops use commercial to supplement that income, you know, when color changes down are slow. Right. Yeah. Usually they, they call the, uh, color change the the eye candy, the eye candy right. wraps. And then, you know, they're usually doing 60% of their work is all commercial, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think you're doing great. It, it, you know, as small as it is, if you just got a bunch of hood wraps or a bunch of roof wraps coming in, that's still a lot of income and it's a quick turnaround, you know, definitely, so definitely. It, in my eyes, the Chrome delete kits, the quick tail light tents, if, if you've got, you know, quantity, then, you know what I mean? The price doesn't really matter, you know? Right. Right. On a day to day basis here at our shop, like with, roof wraps and tail light overlays, smaller projects, the ones that take about an hour. Um, you know, we're, we're knocking out anywhere from five to six cars a day, you know, wow. on average. So we, we have a, 
I think the volume's there. I don't know how that stacks up for most people. I'm not really sure what a lot or a little it would be, but I, I mean, it's, it's affording, you know, eight employees right now. So. Right. Yeah. T- talk to me about your employees. Cause, um, you, you've got a lot of people like behind you as far as your media guys right. or girls, you know, your regular <laughs> crew, uh, that right. you got going on. Uh, tell me who's working with you nowadays. So we have a uh, Mitch, if you watch our YouTube channel, Mitch is on there all the time. He does all the dismantling of vehicles as well as wrapping. He's been with me for a couple of years now, came in, didn't really know much about wrapping and, uh, you know, kind of just stood by my stood by my side and eventually just ended up killing it with wrapping too. So on top of being an awesome automotive dismantler, he's killing it with wrapping too. So I don't even know if that's the word to use because I don't <laughs> want to discredit him. He's so much more than that. He's, he's my right hand. Um, so Mitch, definitely uh, heavily involved in the company. We have Johnny, also another rapper here. And then going back to, uh, you know, like I said earlier, we have a couple different sources of revenue, but we do a lot of uh, pre-cut vinyls. So every car that comes in the shop, we'll create templates, uh, mm-hmm. whether it be a stripe kit, tail light tint kit, that's all pre-cut. And we put it on our website and uh, that's where the bulk of the employees are is on the other side of the shop, shipping out orders all day. You know, So we get anywhere from 50 to 100 orders a day, uh, just pre-cutting vinyl. Right. And, and, you, and your love for Subarus, t- talk to me a little bit about that because I think you had started making these you know, templates and overlays and whatnot for, for a majority of Subaru um, clients, right. right? Well, you know, it's it's definitely a, a love for Subarus. I do like Subarus a lot, um, but mainly having a platform that really was in need of what I was providing, you know, um, I think the Subaru, there was just, maybe because I like those cars, I was really able to open my eyes to create product. Mm-hmm. So we created a really diverse catalog of product and they've just sold well. That's you know, awesome. So, since then, we've opened up the catalog of product that we're designing to from everything. You know, the Hellcat that we have in today, it's all in for R&D, product creation, stripe kits, uh, side rocker panel kits, things like that. And do you physically do all the templating yourself or does someone else handle most of that work? I do all of that. That's probably my biggest position here at the shop is uh, the R&D side of the product. Um, I haven't found anybody that, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I can trust, but that I'm willing to let it go to yet, you know, because I'm really meticulous with the products that we create. Yeah. There's a ton of vendors on eBay doing it themselves too. And they're just usually not, not up to par. So I I never want to fall in that category. So the best way is just to do it myself. Right. Right. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, people might think that it only takes um, a few minutes to template a small taillight or whatever the case may be, but sometimes the littlest things take the longest time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, like I said, I'm crazy with it. I, I'll go in depth and make sure that everything sits proportionally, all the lines are perfectly straight. So, it, you know, for example, today on the, the Hellcat that we have in, I'm sure you guys will see it on Instagram at some point. Um, it's a side graphic and I incorporated um, the owner's owner of the vehicle, his logo, which is his uh, exhaust company. So I incorporated the logo in it and um, try to create this OEM looking graphic incorporating his logo into it uh, which was just a reverse cut so right. it wasn't it was just a single piece of satin black vinyl with the reverse cut but spent hours hours trying to get it right and uh, i finally got into a position where i like it and uh now you know spending all that time creating the product now it's something i can sell over and over again you know if somebody else wants it we can put it on the website uh, you know so that's that's really what i do for the most part how much of the business is um the website uh e-commerce side as opposed to your rap business? That's a great question. I mean, I, I get that all the time because I think from the outside in, people always assume we're a rap shop. You know, this is the bulk of what we do and it's really not. Um, I would say 80% of our work is done online. Wow. Yeah, 80% that's, of it. So, that's incredible. You know, we don't bring a ton of, ton of cars in and, and I think a lot of people always question that. They're like, well, how are they getting by? You know, because we do three to four cars a month mm-hmm. in full color change wraps. Right. It's not a ton of volume, not to support our, our full staff. Right. And and I think you have a great brand too. I think the brand, the logo, the looks, it, the simplicity of everything. I think even your merchandise, like your hats are like sick. Your, your shirts are just so simple. But I think just the word premium just puts right. a huge dollar sign on it. Like if you wear it, it's like almost like you feel like a million right. bucks. You know what I mean? It's just 
great. T- tell me a little bit of, of how you created premium. Tell me a little bit of your background first, you know what I mean? How you came up to where you are now as far as your career. Well, I think uh, going back to the branding side, where I think I got a lot of that from was my previous occupation, only one other job before this. Um, I worked for a celebrity drummer who owned a clothing brand, and uh, mm-hmm. his name was Travis Barker, or is Travis Barker. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, has, he had a really successful clothing brand, and I was able to be involved with that early on, worked in the warehouse into um, sales, into marketing, where I really found my place was in marketing and just learning how to brand a company. And uh, it was more on the apparel side. So when it came to creating my own brand, creating premium, uh, I put a lot of emphasis on creating you know, a logo right out of the gate. I wanted to make sure that we didn't just get started and think about the logo later. The brand right. was important from the beginning. And uh, you know, if you look at the logo, it's not, uh, it's not just a font. You know, it was custom made. Right. It was made by one of the artists from from the company that I worked for previously. So these guys were, you know, really well known in the graphic, the graphic design world. So, you know, we got a really cool artist behind the, behind the logo. And um, yeah, so early on working in that, working for uh, Travis in the apparel world, uh, moving forward into my own business, I carried a lot of the apparel stuff into the, you know, into my building my business. Tell me a little bit about um, like your background, how you got into the, rap industry coming from the apparel and marketing side of it how did you how did you come across like hey let's make some stickers you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> right right well think about this you know on the on the marketing side being in the marketing department uh, a lot of that stuff comes down to advertisement stuff and uh, at that time they were printing famous the company i was working for was printing a lot of window perf stuff and um, all digital window perf and they were constantly looking for installers and uh, I put myself in that position to be in the marketing department and go do the installs of vinyl. And that really kind of got things rolling. And I also, you know, attempted to do a roof wrap early on. And that kind of brought the car side together. But I still didn't identify that those two industries were the same industry, you know, the graphic print installation as well as automotive styling. I still didn't identify that. Um, but I did, you know, do these installs for Famous. And then I went over and I tried to do a, a roof wrap. And, slowly started to come together and uh, kind of grew into what it is now. You know, one of my first wraps was a, I believe it was a 99 Eclipse. Um, I was going to say Honda, not a Honda. Uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse. Right. Did a roof wrap on that. And uh, this was early on. This was in 2008 or nine, somewhere around there. And I didn't explore materials. I don't even know if they made stuff wide enough at the time, but I think I got a 48 inch sheet of material. 3M and I had to actually split it because this roof wrap was too long. So we did like a seam in the middle and it was just terrible, but that kind of got the whole thing rolling. And from there, you know, obviously the industry started to grow, material got better. And uh, I got to kind of grow with the industry as, you know, 3M started coming out with the 1080 series and all the good products that we get to enjoy now. Right, right. Yeah. So that, that leads me to my next question, which I ask all my guests, 3M or Avery? Which, which um, side are you on? It, I, I I love both. You know, I, obviously both have their their uh, positive and negatives. 3M has the you know the great air release, but it is a uh, it is super tacky. Not super right. tacky, but it's more tacky than uh, Avery. Uh, I like Avery a lot. You know, I have no complaints with Avery. I feel like the consistency of the materials is always on par. Uh, but both, I really enjoy. I, I can't say that I like one or one better than the other. Some Dude. of my installers here might say say different, but yeah, right. <laughs> uh, they all seem to really like Avery installs, but I like both. Do you guys use any uh, any other uh, brands like Oracle or Arlon or KPMF? To be honest with you, man, like listening to your podcast and, and hearing other installers, um, there was somebody I'm trying to remember what his shop was, but I think it was man, I, I don't remember, but it was one of your guys you're interviewing, and he was talking about installing a ton of. Um, not Vivid. It was another brand, the KPMF. The KPMF, yeah, probably Chucky. Chucky from Canada. Yeah, I'm not sure, but he was talking about it, and it, it got me going, thinking like, I know some of these materials are a little harder to install. Yeah. Because uh, that's what I've been hearing a lot of, even including the Vivid stuff. It is a little harder to install because I have worked with Vivid, um, but it's worth learning. You know, I, I'm excited to bring those materials in and, and definitely learn about them. So 
as of yet, or as of right now, we're not really experimenting and stocking those materials, but I do plan on it, and I, I credit that to you and, and what you're doing because I got to listen to a lot of these guys, and it really opened my eyes to, like, it is cool to bring in a diverse um, array of colors that obviously 3M and Avery don't have, bringing on KPMF with some of the colors they have. They're just amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I just, um, I think I was just looking on social media today. I think it was Tech Wraps just came out with their new colors. It's kind of neat. It's got like this nice little chrome box that comes in. And um, okay. there's like a metallic series and maybe a chrome series one. They've got a lot of great colors. Not familiar with the product too, too much. Um, I'm sure as the podcasts get, get going, I'm sure somebody will be using that brand and we'll be talking about it. But I thought their marketing packaging looked unbelievable i forget who's uh who had posted it but i thought it looked really cool i'll definitely look it up i'll definitely yeah. look it up yeah tech wrap you know i think fellers is carrying tech wrap tech wrap now so it makes it really easily available you know yeah that's, that's who we use for the most part is fellers for all of our our vinyl distribution but uh I, I know that they're stocking it now so i may try it out yeah definitely we've got we've got frank coming on next week for um podcast episode as well great guy that's so awesome i was gonna you know mentioning on, on frank he's probably one of the only people like where I've, I've dm on instagram and had a conversation with them you know where he responded and it was just cool you know to see that that he cared about his business that much you know yeah uh, a lot of people don't lot know of companies, a lot yeah. of people don't know like he's the one actually behind you know the instagram it, it's it's unbelievable i would have i would have totally thought that he would be so busy you know what I mean? He'd have someone else in turn or someone taking care of the reposting and whatnot. But lo and behold, it's it's actually him. Right, right. Which is so cool, man. Um, and from there, you know, about a year ago, I DM'd him on Instagram. And ever since then, I, I will, I'll randomly get a message or back and forth. Just let me know that he's seen what we're doing, which is awesome. I love it. Definitely, definitely. Let's uh let's switch gears a little bit and talk about your vlogging. Okay. Um, you've got an incredible crew of people videoing you how how did this all come about i've always been into like influencer marketing so i guess it starts there uh, going back a couple years ago uh, i would i'd bring people in that were influential on youtube or instagram and we'd wrap their cars at a discounted rate you know for the promotion yeah and uh we did it a ton of times and the business kept growing and it got to a point where we kind of peaked. I was like, man, like we're really, no matter who we bring in, we're not getting as big of a jump as we were getting from the marketing early on. And uh, I kind of just put myself in the position. I'm like, well, we need to do it ourselves now. Because anytime you're working with an influencer or somebody who you think is going to bring you business, on the other side, like us sitting on the other side, we're like, man, if you just would have said this or would have did that, it would have brought in so much more business, you know? Yeah. But you can never go after a creator and, and tell them how to create because that's what they do. So I put us in the position where we're now creating our content and showing exactly what we want to show. And, uh, you know, if you watch our vlogs, it's it's really not entirely around the rap world. It's more about the lifestyle and the crew here and just having fun. And, and that's that's what it's really about is I want to show people like, you know, even if you're not in the rap world, you can watch our vlogs because I think you can see that we all enjoy what we're doing. Right. And uh, I just, I, I'm just a big advocate of that just in general for anybody is like, if you're not happy with what you're doing with your life, just don't do it. So uh, I really like to push that message. Make Absolutely. sure you're happy with whatever you're doing with your life. And for me, it just happens to be rapping and hanging out with my crew, you know, my staff, all these guys that work here, they're not, they're not employees. They're like brothers to me, you know? Right. What's it like to, uh, to have a camera? Cause I feel like once you walk into the shop, the camera's on you for right. most of the day. How, how how did you, you know what I mean? Like, what does that feel like? A year ago, year and a half ago, I couldn't do it. I was, you, if a camera came up, came up, I was running away. I was going the opposite <laughs> direction, you know? And uh, I just wasn't used to it. Now it's just kind of, it's just like anything else. You keep doing it and uh, you're looking for it now. You're excited about it. So now now when I walk in, we, we brought on the media team. And uh, part of that is cap capturing everything organic, meaning that the cameras are on almost all day. Wow. Uh, so we have two full-time videographers now. And uh, so that's one camera's in the shop at all times and the other kind of camera kind of revolves around me. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting once you get used to it. You know, it's, it's like, wow, I'm, I'm not bothered by this anymore. 
right it's just sake second nature for you now exactly that's awesome that's awesome now you got el jefe working yep. with you too i remember watching blog. that blog from from the get-go with this camaro yeah so he uh him and i met probably less than a year ago but he brought me a vehicle that was wrapped by a shop locally within my community or right down the street from us actually in the same business complex it was another wrap shop did a really bad job and uh, they brought it over to me to correct the job. And uh, we didn't actually get to it because the guy that owned the car, I think he was just over it after he, what he went through with the, uh, the previous wrap shop, getting this terrible wrap job. Uh, there was blade marks all over the car. I think he was just done with it. So he ended up selling the car. And we didn't get to, get to correct the project like we wanted to. I definitely wanted to cover it and you know, show that on the YouTube channel. But right. uh, it didn't happen. You know? But that's how I met El Jefe. That's awesome. So how much content do you guys create? I mean, you guys are, are pretty much videoing every day. How much content of that do you guys actually use? That's a good question. You know, a lot of it does get used. Um, we're, we're talking about repurpose, repurposing a lot of the content, putting it on sub channels. You know, I have another channel called Premium Garage, mm -hmm. which is more specific to uh, certain models. You know, so a lot of the Subaru product, just real cut dry install videos are on there how to wrap a hood, how to wrap tail lights, all of that stuff goes over to the other YouTube channel, which isn't huge. It is growing. You know, it's almost like 15,000 subscribers. So right. I know that there's a good audience there that is all basically people that want to learn about materials. So we dump a lot of that content there. Um, but yeah, a ton of content gets recorded. A lot of it doesn't make it. Some of it's too too crazy. You know, in the <laughs> shop, you know, it's there's a lot of shop talk. We have a lot of fun here. Yeah. So only a small portion of it makes makes it. And the stuff you guys do see is pretty washed down because, you know, I guess it's just a bunch of guys hanging out in the shop. It could get it could get pretty bad. No, totally. I totally <laughs> understand. For sure. And I'm sure the listeners could would vouch for that one. So right. just so that if, in case the listeners, you know, haven't seen any of your vlogs or even follow you on Instagram. Dude, you got 115,000 followers on YouTube and 117,000 followers on Instagram. Right, right. It's, How, it's amazing. Like, your marketing is just insane. It's like every time I watch one of your videos on um, on the uh, on Instagram, it's 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 going straight to your website, and it's right. it, everything's just getting directed. I mean, I think you're doing. I talked to Adam Ship about marketing. We talked almost two hours about marketing and he's kind of like the marketing guru working for uh, Giovanni Wheels and everything, doing their stuff. Um, what are you doing for your marketing as far as social media? Because social media is kind of like our era, you know what right. I mean? Not so much like the older, you know, you know, late 40s, 50s, they're just on Facebook. How have you changed and transitioned to turn followers or people that are watching you either into uh, potential, you know, buyers, you know what I mean? Right, right. Because that's, that's, that's like the ultimate goal is the people that are watching your videos, listening to your, uh, watching your vlogs, uh, Instagram, social media, you in turn want to, you know. Somehow, somehow monetize it. Right, exactly. Right, right. And that's, it's not a negative thing to say, you know, I, I agree with that. All of the followers in some way, some shape or form is to eventually push them to the wrap shop or to our web store. And I think the best way to do that, which a lot of people get confused about, is people are continuously pushing sales in a sales way. And I push it more on a lifestyle and culture and environment. You know, I show them what we're about, who we are. You know, people know my staff by name. You know, we'll, we'll go to a car show, we'll go to a mall, and they'll walk up to them and they're like, hey, Mitch, hey, Anthony, you know, they recognize these guys. Right. So it's a little easier to buy from these from these guys or our company because you know who we are. You know, so my goal all the time with the content is just to let people know who we are, what we're about, and not really push them. You know, they they end up at our shop to come here and meet us and talk to us, and we end up selling a wrap to them or a t-shirt. You know, right? What's what's your best seller? Would it be your t-shirts? Um, you know, our window banners. You know, and I think that's that's a really unique thing for a wrap shop is uh, we have a ton of vehicles that around the world that we don't have any involvement in. We don't wrap them. We don't do anything to them. And people buy our decals and put them on their car, you know? And, uh, you know, so our window banners are a huge, huge success for us. And it's just a blessing. That's to see awesome. them all over, all over Instagram, people in different parts of the world with our decal or our, our window banners. So 
Window banners sell really well. T-shirts sell really well. Uh, all of the uh, merchandise, the premium auto styling merchandise sells in general really good. I think I was watching the video. Um, probably not the most recent one, but I remember you were in the doing a video in the GTR and you were just talking. I think it was just talking about business and how you right. got started. And you had seen someone with a premium sticker drive by and you're like, see, like that yeah. just never gets old. You know what I mean? It's just humbling to see somebody with a decal that you don't even know in a different <laughs> state or whatever right. and just be like, damn, you know? For me, it's just it's just an eye opener. You know, and I hope anybody listening to this, um, I feel like a lot of the rap shops kind of become just hot in their community and their neighborhood, which is great. You know, but the doors are open right now with with the internet being the way it is, and you know, it's it's you have access globally. You know, and I I always keep that in mind. I'm like, look, our marketing's never gauged to get somebody right in our door. Like we're we're attacking the world basically. You know, we're we're going after everybody. So you know, with that said, our marketing's always gauged towards you know, getting them to our website, getting them to our Instagram to continuously come back and just know who we are. Right. Um, who's your biggest influence as far as um, in your in your life that you look up to, whether it's a vlogger or just someone just out there that you just kind of just kind of like want to have a, as a mentor or right. someone that you look at, you know, and you're like, damn, I, I you know. Because I look up to uh, Gary V. I listen yep. to his podcast. I listen to his um, you know, vlogs. The guy is just, you know, if I'm down, yeah. that guy brings you to 100 so fast. Same here. And, and that's how I knew you and I were going to connect well because uh, I started following you on Instagram and I seen that you liked his post, post as well, you know. So I'm like, awesome. You know, Jeff listens to Gary as well. So that's awesome. I'm a big fan of Gary V. Um he actually was a, a really big inspiration for me when it got, you know, he was putting out the document, not create. Yeah. If you remember yeah. that, yep. that stuck with me so hard. It, after I listened to that, I was like, man, I'm scared of this camera here, but I got to do it. And that was a year, year and a half ago. And since then, I mean, I attribute the success of our YouTube channel and our business to how it's grown because of social media to what his words were, you know? So uh, if you guys don't know who Gary is, definitely get on Gary V's you know, podcast or his, uh, not his podcast, his YouTube channel for the most part is where I get a lot of uh, content from him. But yeah. yeah, Gary's a big inspiration um, outside of the box. Somebody else that I really look up to, which is very like way out there. But I, I like Rob Deerdeck. If you guys are Rob familiar Deerdeck. with Rob. Yeah, I, I just loved everything he did. I feel like he was a, like a, like a media god. You know, he, he got in there, got the Fantasy Factory going. Or even before that, um, all of the brands that he was putting on in um, Rob and Big, DC, um, everything he was doing, it was all branding, you know? Yep. Yep. So, yeah, he's helped all of his friends, everyone that worked with them, whether right. it be, uh, I think her name Chantal, right? Yeah, she, to help, her, help. his cousin, yeah. all of them. And, and I really looked up to that, you know, and that was one of the big things that, and it's funny that you point that out, I liked the fact that he put on his staff, you know, he put on his crew and and help them evolve, you know, to where they were able to stand on their own two feet without them. Right. Yeah. That that that's great. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even have thought. I, I forgot about him ever since <laughs> Fairfax. You know that show had stopped. You right. know, and then recently, um, recently, um, Big Black passed yeah. away. You know what yeah, I mean? Super and, unfortunate. And, yeah, that sucks. You know what I mean? And he got married, and you know now he's living that the daddy life. You know what I mean? Or the married life, right. but um. That's it's, great. You know, the question that you asked about inspiration, it's, it's came up a lot recently. Um, as our channel continues to grow, we get a lot of the younger kids hitting me up and asking me that same question about who I've been inspired by. And I really dug deep. I'm like, who was it? Who, you know, and, and Rob was one of those people that I just really looked up to. Yeah, he's definitely our generation. You know what I mean? I think you and I are within a year or so in age. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of cool to see. You know, I, I love the old timies like the the you know 50s and 60s i i loved how people would dress back then and like right. just the lifestyle is so different but then you kind of look at now it's like those people are still kind of around they get to see the you know the car evolve the internet you know come to life cell phones it's gotta be crazy for them it's it, gotta it, be crazy it's gotta be because i mean most people don't even have a uh a computer anymore it's just like a tablet right. an ipad or just even a phone now. It's just everything at your fingertips is just unbelievable what you can do. You know, I agree. 
it, and, and you're either going to evolve with it or you're going to be left behind, especially in some type of, you know, our type of industry where things were evolving. Like you said, now you can purchase merchandise and products online and you, you just kind of got to go with the times. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me ask you, what is your favorite? What well, was your favorite project you've worked on for the rap favorite project? Which so rap are you man. like? <laughs> oh my God. I'm so glad this one worked out the way I wanted to. Let me go through my Instagram because it's so hard to, to say because I, I enjoy every project we do, you know, and it's so easy for me to tell you right now that I love doing the Rolls Royce Yeah, uh, because it's so fresh on my mind. Uh, so I don't want to tell you that one because that's the easy one, you know, but I love doing that project. Um, I think that within the last couple of months, I really enjoyed wrapping the Civic Type R because okay. it really, uh, it was an intricate car. Bumper was tough. Um, we recorded it. It went up on YouTube, got a lot of views, but behind the scenes, people don't know that I actually wrapped the bumper, I think twice because I wasn't happy with it. So, um, it was a tough bumper, has little vents on the sides. Yep. Um, so yeah, you know, like getting through that project and being happy with it now, seeing that car around still to this day and looking great. I'm really happy with the way that one turned out. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, I, th I think it was, uh, Kevin that said the, uh, install cowboys with the one piece bumpers it's just it, it's crazy to some of the stuff right. you see out there it just you know it's it, you're better off piecing it and having peace of mind for you that it's not right. gonna the material's not gonna fail um as long as you hide the seams on the body lines and do it the right way a seam is a seam it's right. perfectly it fine right yeah and, and i think a lot of people don't really understand the complexity of the installation that goes into something like this that we do, you know, I, it's a uh, science. Right. And I, I was, I was guilty of that for so long. I was trying to do things all in one piece and that was always the goal, you know, do everything in one piece. And still to this day, yeah, we, you try to eliminate seams as much as possible, but um, learning how to do them properly and practicing it, you learn how to do it to where you can almost make it a hundred percent invisible. Right. And um, you know, so I had to, turn that switch off in my brain though, telling me to keep trying to do everything in one piece in order to learn how to do it right. And um, yeah, um, I'm definitely not opposed to doing a seam when necessary. Right. Now I'm going to transition into what's the project that you like the least, whether it be like technical, least. technical, you know, just really pain in the butt to put back together or just a really tough, you know, doing the bumper three times, right. <laughs> ready right. to give up. We've, we've all had those, <laughs> you know, once or twice. We, um, I guess there's a few, I, anybody in the rap industry that's been around for a while, I'm sure they have quite a few stories. And the one recently that stands out to me was rapping in Aston Martin. Uh, this Aston Martin came in and the owner of the car, um, didn't have a budget. He did whatever he wanted. You know, he was a rich guy. And before the shop car made it to our shop, it had probably been in 10 other shops, mm -hmm. uh, getting different stuff made, custom interior, bunch of carbon fiber, all real carbon parts put inside the interior. And the last step was to come to us to have the wrap done as well as lighting. Um, we had a, a lighting guy in our shop as well doing custom lighting. So it came here for that. And, um, you know, when the car's been through 10, 15 different mechanics, different hands, you never know how the car was treated and uh, getting here, it was just a mess. Everything was super hard to work on and um, it was hard to take apart. The fenders on that car were huge. So if you guys you know, are familiar with Aston Martin, yep. the fender was like, I want to say we used like a 72 inch long sheet of material to make that fender work, you know? So it was a complex project. Uh, we got through it. The guy's really happy with the car till this day. So. It was just tough, you know. That was definitely uh, an experience, though. We we weren't ready for it at the time. Brought it in. We said it was going to be. I believe we told him it was going to be a week. We ended up keeping the car for like two two weeks plus. Wow. Uh, so it, it was one of those ones that we were pulling our hair out, trying <laughs> to just put it back together properly. Because that was another thing is once we took it apart, the last thing I'd want to do is put it back together the way that it was done when it came to us. So. So, you know, it, when it ever makes it down the line to another shop, the last thing I wanted to look at is point the finger at us and be like, oh, well, Premium touched it last. They did this, you know. 
So we try to correct a lot of the issues that it came in with, whether that been a missing bolt or a broken clip. You know, that's that's huge here for me. I always emphasize to my guys is um, if you break something, just tell me. You know, don't try to hide it because a lot of the guys out there dismantling uh, and wrapping, it, it can get looked over by me, you know. Um, they just right. put it back together. And I don't want that. So all my employees know it's like if something breaks, just tell me. Let's go buy it. Let's get it done right. And uh, we'll have that peace of mind with our customer. And my customers know that too. You know, we're definitely never going to shortcut something or, or let something go out that I'm not happy with. Right. What uh, what color did you end up wrapping the Austin in? It was a gloss black paint, and he just wanted to go with satin black. Okay. So it wasn't a hard color change at all. Uh, I believe we did door jams on that one. Um, yeah, no videos or uh, pictures up yet of that. That, I think I was so stressed out, I didn't even post anything on Instagram about <laughs> you it. You just kind of want to forget <laughs> it, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There, there was a video that went on YouTube. Uh, it was buried in one of the vlogs where I, I expressed how, how difficult it was. Yeah, but, I, did, uh, I did see that one. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, you know, it didn't really make it on social media just because, you know, still to this day when I see he posts his car, I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to remember that car, you know? So are you, are you tagged in it at least? Here and there, we'll get tagged in it. The owner, I think he's like an attorney. He was an, not an older guy, but not like a social media dude, you know? Yeah, you definitely so, don't want to mess that up. <laughs> right, right. You want to keep it cool. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knows pretty, pretty high people at high places. Right. So I guess that was part of the stress in the shop. Was really oh, thinking, my like, God. Man, do we want to tell this attorney that his car is kind of a hack job? Not in a negative way, but it's been through some hands that weren't as nice as we are. You know? Yeah, definitely. But, um, we just we just expressed all of the things that, or let him know about all the things we came across, and uh, he gave us a budget through and through to get everything fixed. So it worked out. That's cool. That's cool. Um, what's in it? What's in it for premium for 2018? You got any big uh, big plans? 2018 definitely a lot more content. I'm really really enjoying content. When I first talked to you, I even mentioned that I wanted to do a podcast. Yeah, um, I just wanted to to do audio, you know, with you and I both being Gary Vee fans, um, hearing the things that he's saying, he's telling us to go in that direction, you know, and attributing a lot of my success to what he's told us in the past to, to, to build our businesses out. I see where he's saying to transition to or what to also to bring, you know, into your, your um, social media, you know, these right. podcasts and letting people connect with you. So definitely going to be doing something along the lines of that. So it's really cool to be doing this with you, you know, to kind of get a feel for it. Um, a lot more products going on, on our website. We nice. uh, been working with 3M. 3M reached out to us off of a video, you know. So I'll say that here. We uh, we released a vlog, and within a day, I got a call saying, "Hey, we're watching your video," and it happened to be 3M. Wow. And uh, you know, so they've been working with us, supplying us material, backing up some of our marketing um, with our YouTube channel. At every hundred thousand subscribers, we're giving away a car wrap. So when we reached, that. yeah, when we reached that first milestone, it was like two days before when 3M had reached out to me. I told them that we were doing that, and they're like, "Done, we're on board." Every hundred thousand subscribers, just know that we'll take care of you on material. So you know they hopped on, committed to that, and that's a huge relief for me because giving away these car wraps costs somebody money, and that's me. Right. You know, it's costing me to my staff travel wherever it may be because we're allowing this contest to go all over the world you know i really don't care where it is i just want to travel and i want to use wrapping as a way to do it and, yeah that's um, that's great i know in one of the vlog uh one of your vlogs you talk about it how about if somebody from overseas ended up getting it you, right. you're like ah, uh, i might have to go alone on this one you right. know but you know being passionate about wrapping and be able to go going to do it in different environments like i'm excited man so giving away these wraps uh you know it's hard because it, that's how we make money but um you know, it's incentive for me to keep pushing our brand forward, um, getting those subscriber counts in. Not right. that the number really matters, you know, but it is cool to see the brand grow and more people watching. Yeah, definitely. Talk about the uh, the last wrap you gave away for the 100000 that you got because, you know, you had another shop reach out to you to use right. their shop as a facility to uh, install this. That's, you know, that's one of those things about this industry is, is how awesome the community can be. You know, a lot of these installers we're able to connect with all over the world. You know, I got installers that hit me up. They see that they reach out to me, asking me about projects we've done where they need advice on. That's really cool. You know, 
Right. So I, I love that about this this community of rappers. Um, but going back to the Utah trip, when we when we gave away the car wrap, um, it was snowing out there, and I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't think about you know the elements changing really. Um, so when I when I heard that it was super cold over there, I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be crazy. On top of that, the guy that won. He goes, hey, when are you coming out? I said, we'll be there in a week. He goes, cool, I'll start cleaning my mom's garage out. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, like this is going to be terrible. That's so funny. And um, randomly, out of nowhere, out of the blue, I get a call from uh, Micah, the owner of Inkwise Graphics. You know, He's now a friend of mine, really close friend of mine. We both sh- share a lot of feedback back and forth now. But prior to this, I didn't know about him. But he reached out, said he'd been watching the vlogs. He knew that we were coming to Utah, and he knew that we were coming to – just down the street from where he's at. He goes, yo, you guys can use my shop. And he literally handed us the keys, you know, and gave us his shop. So it was, it was a blessing. It was really, really humbling, you know, um, even opened up my eyes to be like, I want to help somebody out that same way he did for me. Yeah. And um, but yeah, going to Utah to give away a car wrap and Inkwise Graphics loaned out their shop to us. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I love about the industry too. No matter weight, you know, what cloth you cut from, where you're at, no matter what, it's it's kind of like everyone just kind of gets together because we all have something in common. We've all gone through those same struggles and whatnot. And to help out a fellow a fellow rapper with a shop or media or whatever the case may have been, it's just nice that we all just kind of lend a helping hand to whoever needs it, you know? Right. Now, you don't belong to any groups either, like Pain is Dead or The Mob or anything like that, right? No, nothing like that. I, I, I kind of stayed in my shell for so long in my box over here doing my thing. And I, I'm not going to say I don't see the value in those things. I, w- I would love to figure out what they're about. But I've been always so focused on what we're doing here as far as brand development. Yeah. I really never paid attention to what's going on on the other side. you know. And I think that's one of my downfalls. I definitely want to get more involved with the community. Um, so it definitely would be a goal as well for 2018 to definitely start connecting a little bit more within the industry. Yeah. And how about certifications for your shop? You guys hold any certs or anything? I love this question that you ask, you know, all, all the people that you have on. And I agree with a lot of them. I don't have any certs. And um, with this industry being the way it is, I can see why people um, would want that, you know, to have that comfort. People come to your shop and asking if you're certified. But at the end of the day, work speaks for itself. Word of mouth speaks for itself. And, uh, you know, we, we've never had an issue getting jobs in the door, you know? Yeah. So um, I will say that people that are listening that are thinking about getting certified, it's not a bad thing to do. Uh, working with 3M now, some of the Avery things that we have connections with, the first thing they ask you is, are you certified by us? Mm-hmm. And I have to break the news. I'm like, no, we're not, you know? And uh, I think 2018 will be the year that we, we may send somebody within the shop to go get certified. Um, I definitely... Definitely think it's a good thing to have, but me personally, there's nothing better than getting in there, making mistakes and learning. And I've been doing that for the last six years, you know? Yeah. So I don't think that there's any class or anything that's going to teach me anything that I haven't dealt with, but I may be wrong until I get there. Yeah. I mean, no matter what, I mean, you're going to take the test wrapping the hardest car there is to wrap, which is the HHR on the 3M course. Okay. They're They're going to teach you how to wrap windows how to wrap walls how to wrap floors they just want to know that you know with the technique how much post heating where the temperature needs to be at and take a written test right i'm an og i've been i've only been wrapping probably just as long as you have six seven years i've had my own i've had my own business for a little over 13 years um but i don't hurt i don't have any certifications i've kind of learned through trial and error as well and 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 yeah I, i guess you put that in perspective you know when you have that word of mouth and that, um, you know, you've already had that business built up, sometimes certificates, you might not need them, you know what I mean, right. for someone being in the industry. But a lot of the new the new generations that are coming in and just thinking they can just buy a printer and get into it, it's it takes a little bit, you know, and, and having the accessibility of certifications now more of them in, in, in more states, more locations. Um, it's just easier to get certified now than it was six years ago. Right, right. I agree. Um, I, you know, as far as the certifications go, we've talked about going to 
Minnesota to have the whole team like as a shop certified. So that might be the direction we go is getting the whole shop certified, uh, which I, I, if I heard correctly, that was a, was an option to not, not have an individual installer, but have your shop certified as well. Yeah. I think that'd be cool to do. Yeah, definitely. That way everyone just holds the same level of certification. Um, and that's tough too, when you have employees, cause you never want to see you send a, a one individual employee over another or what, right. or whatever the case may be. And then God forbid, you know, they leave in a year. Right. You know what I mean? That that's the hardest part, you know, sending someone out now they're taking that certification, going somewhere else and using that to their advantage. But right. right. You know, it's, it's tough being a business owner because those are, the, those are kind of like the things you don't think of, you know, at the end. Right. You know what I mean? With so many employees, most, most guys are running, you know, one or two people in their shops, maybe three. Um, you've right. got eight. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, where do you see the industry going in the next five years, in your opinion? We were just talking about this in the shop and I think that's how we know we're true enthusiasts. Like, the color direction and, and the possibilities, you know, um, I think what sparked the conversation yesterday is we were looking at a car that was, I believe was painted and they threw water on it and by the temperature changed the color of the, uh, the job. Right. And I'm, and I'm like, I was going to be that, you know, there's going to be something crazy like that in the vinyl industry, hopefully sooner than the next five years, you know? Right. Um, so I'm just excited to see the materials get better, easier application and um, better quality in general. You know, the color, color palettes, I'm sure they're going to continue to grow. Seeing the colors that came over, came out over the last year, I think really changed the industry. Psychedelic, uh, all of the color flip colors. I mean, it opened up the doors like eyeballs to this industry and brought in a lot of wraps into our shop as well as everybody else. You know, the psychedelic wrap was huge. Yeah, no, psychedelic, I mean, definitely was the color of 2017, for sure. It was. I mean, how many cars did, did, how many did, did you wrap in cars. that? 10. At least 10. Jeez. At least 10. Unbelievable. Out of I mean, out of the colors that are out now, I don't think 3M came out with their new color, color chart yet. Um, haven't had a chance... But based on, based on the on the colors coming out for for next year, I would probably say it's it's going to be another flip color again for sure. Right, right. That everyone's going to be choosing. Uh, deep space is really popular here. The three M deep space. That yep. color is you know every time somebody comes and sees it in person, I feel like we're installing deep space every other week now. Yeah, that's a great color. I really like that color too. Yeah. Now you guys did the. Um, what is it? The was it the Scion? No, it was a BRZ in the deep space. Yeah, BRZ deep space. That that video did really well. You know, it's it's up to like six hundred thousand views, and uh, for a little rap shop here in Riverside, California, I mean, it's it's a lot of eyeballs. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that was a huge project for us, and we had no idea it was probably one of those projects that we didn't really anticipate at all was going to make any any moves or any waves and. I got people coming in the shop all the time and say they've seen that video and it brought them here. It brought that's them to our cool. shop. See, that's what it's all about for sure. And and I think you're, you're doing such a great job social media wise, um, you know, with with everything and, you know, having uh, Gary V by our side, listening to him. <laughs> definitely a huge inspiration with trying to do Snapchat stuff. He, he's a big right. Snapchat guy. Um and taking advantage of the tools that we got. And, and I love that you're doing it, you know, cla classy. You know what I mean? You're not pushing the product. You're you're being creative with it. And yeah, you're, you're definitely killing it. You're, you're a big inspiration for me, social media wise, for sure. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I really do. I really do. You know, what we do social media wise is, um, I don't know where it comes from. It just comes out, you know, and naturally it just happens. You know, I really try to capture the moment. And I think I, I learned that from our videographers here. It's like, there's no planning. It's just capturing it as it happens and uh, putting it out there. You know, I, I don't try to, to hide anything. I'm not the shop that's trying to hide secrets or anything. I try to tell whatever I can to get people motivated to either do it themselves, go visit another wrap shop or come to us. It's just all about pushing the industry forward. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely doing it and you, you're killing it for sure. Um, Daniel, dude, I really appreciate you taking the time out to... Uh, 
to talk to us a little bit on the podcast, man. I, I, I wish well for 2018. And I really hope you pushed that podcast. I know you did a live feed with Al Jefe the other day. I watched I caught the tail end of it um, during your live YouTube uh, nice. video with him. I, I think he, I think you could kill it for sure. Don't, Thank don't. You. I, appreciate I that. know there's a couple guys coming out with podcasts for the industry, you know, putting another one out there. It's just only going to help the industry for sure. I agree, man. You know, the more content, the better. The more awareness we bring to this industry, the better. You know, and I, I love what you're doing. So I was really excited when you hit me up, man. I, I really, like, it's one of those things I, I, I told you, I said, when, you know, you're like, when do you want to do it? I'm like, as soon as you want to do it, you tell me <laughs> when, you know? So uh, I'm really pumped to be on. And, you know, hopefully this information that we're giving out helps people that are listening. And, uh, you know, the message I'd like to convey is if there's anything that I can do to help please hit me up, anybody, you know, anybody listening that has questions, hit me up. And it also, I commend you, you know, for doing what you're doing. I'm really excited about every episode coming, especially hearing that Frank's going to be on. It's going to be so cool to hear that. Yeah, yeah, man, I appreciate that. I really do. Definitely let everybody know where they can um, find you, you know, social media wise, emails, websites. Um, yeah, definitely uh, go visit us on Instagram first and foremost. You know, once you get to our Instagram, it's pretty easy to direct you to everywhere else. You'll see if you go to my Instagram, I'm always pointing you somewhere, whether it be our Facebook, uh, our YouTube, but uh, everything across the board is premium auto styling. So go visit us on all the social media platforms. And like I said, if there's anything I can do, you know, especially with us all wrapping cars, anybody has questions about disassembly, I have probably one of the coolest, best open-minded dismantlers in the shop he's always on the phone with people telling people how to do you know take off different parts he's just awesome with it so i feel like that's a way we can bring value to everybody's helping share and, and uh things that we've experienced so premium auto styling awesome daniel dude i really appreciate it you're such a humble guy man i can't wait to see what uh 2018 brings to you likewise man thank you all right brother we'll talk soon yeah man take care I want to thank Daniel for taking the time out of his day to talk to us a little bit on the podcast. This episode is sponsored by The Rap Promoter, featuring raps, graphics, designs, and tools from around the world. To see more, follow at The Rap Promoter on Instagram and Facebook. For features and advertising, email rap.promoter at mail.com. I want to take a second to thank all my listeners and supporters, as well as sponsors of the podcast. Uh, I really appreciate all your support. And if you could, please share, like, and subscribe this podcast if you like what you're hearing. It really helps us out uh, ranking on iTunes. And don't forget, we are also on Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and now on YouTube. Please go to our YouTube page at allwrapped.podcast and subscribe to that. We'll be posting some videos soon. Till next time, that's a wrap. Yeah.